Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. Government holds a national consultation on the reopening of St. Lucia society. St. Lucia is lauded for its ability to transition into e-learning during the COVID-19 period. And PAHO makes another COVID-19 donation to St. Lucia. The government of St. Lucia is continuing its strategic approach to St. Lucia's COVID-19 response, which has led to the island's key management of the crisis and the announced recovery of all 18 confirmed cases. As the government charts the road to recovery, plans are being shared for the measured and phased approach to reopening St. Lucia society. The framework for reopening was discussed at a national consultation Friday. A five-phase approach is being recommended for the reopening of St. Lucia's economy, which includes Phase 1, A and B, Phase 2, 3, 4 and 5. St. Lucia is currently in the third phase, increased incremental operations, which commenced on the 27th of April 2020 and is due to end on the 31st of May 2020. Each phase is being monitored for triggers that call for moving on to the next phase or reverting to the previous phase. Sharon Gardner Hippolyte of the Performance Management and Delivery Unit in the Office of the Prime Minister explained that the foundation is being laid so that the country can move into the fourth phase. The command center has established several goals for this phase, including large stimulation of the private sector and economy, ensuring healthcare resilience by building capacity at hospitals, reinstating some soft social sectors, and the reopening of the tourism sector and the strict protocols defined by a new licensing regime. Gardner Hippolyte highlighted Phase 5. Finding our new normal, Phase 5. What is our goal? International travel to commence with strict protocols, hotel and tourism sectors to be able to open up again with very strict protocols, and some of this will be discussed in more detail by the Permanent Secretary in the Department of Tourism. Steps required in each phase is vigilant screening at our ports of entry, mass testing programs, and continual referment of new standards and protocols. As we continue to develop and each time going into a new phase, we have to make sure that the protocols and the guidelines are constantly being monitored, evaluated, being implemented in all of our sectors and that they are also being updated in accordance with international best practices. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has instituted and will continue to institute new measures based on the phase and the sectors to facilitate the safe reopening of the sector. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George explained that one such sector is the education sector. Students of grade 6 are expected to sit the common entrance examination on the 30th of June 2020 and form 5 students are expected to sit the CXC examination on the 29th of June 2020. As such, they will be allowed to attend school for the month of June under strict protocols. In this phase that we are now in phase 3, um, our discussions have been on the facilitation of national and regional exams, that is the, the common entrance and the grade the common entrance and the grade six um, exam. So as we continue collaborating with education, we decided that the rest of the school community um, would remain closed except for those critical um, years and those with um, the practical um, component. So we have prepared um, very um, strict guidelines with the Ministry of Education to ensure that the limited period of instruction is done safely to reduce transmission to facilitate the common entrance exam and to facilitate the CXE exams in the in the form fives. So we are hoping that we get the, the cooperation of the various stakeholders with that. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Donalyn Vite, explained that a licensing and certification program will be implemented to ensure adherence to standards while mitigating the risk associated with COVID-19, all while maintaining St. Lucia's competitiveness in the tourism market. Persons coming into St. Lucia will need to meet the prerequisite of a negative COVID test within 24 hours to 48 hours of travel. And we just want to underscore that 
because we imagine that where we found ourselves at some point in the management of COVID was the importation of cases. And so it is very critical for us at the command center and at the various government agencies to ensure that there is a strong management and requirement so that we could minimize risk of importation as much as possible. So if we start to take you through these phases, one, we have mentioned the strong education component of the travel community. So a visitor comes to the airport and they would have to present um, evidence indicating that they, they are negative for COVID-19. There's also mask physical distancing, temperature screening, a regular sanitization of surfaces, hand washing regime, and education of all airports involved and all participants within the chain at airports and the airline community. A five-point guide will be utilized for the reopening of the tourism sector and to guide travel at each step, strict protocols will be put in place to ensure the prevention of the spread of the virus. The points include at the check-in airport, on the flight, at the arrival airport, at the hotel and at the departure airport. The government of St. Lucia will continue to monitor the situation with the COVID-19 pandemic and respond accordingly. Meantime, the director of the Pan-American Health Organization says the roadmap to recovery for any country lies in the control of this novel coronavirus. Dr. Carissa Etienne says the pandemic has forced us to address three emergencies at the same time, health, social and economic, and to be successful, a joint approach is needed. Countries must support their economies while building strong social protection networks and embracing evidence-based public health measures that are essential to saving lives. Only when countries have controlled transmission will they be in a position to implement a well-planned, cautious transition period. During this time, countries should continue to focus on health, strengthening surveillance systems, monitoring health services, and rapidly responding to any resurgence of the virus, while also devising ways to stimulate our region's economy and address poverty. We see a path to recovery in which the health sector is central, both as a guide on how to keep people safe and as a foundation for economic growth and well-being. Dr. Etienne notes that the disruptions caused by COVID-19 have shaken economies to their core. The Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean estimates that the Latin American and Caribbean region will contract by 5.3% this year, the biggest drop in over 100 years. The value of exports is expected to fall by 15% impacting many countries in Latin America and the Caribbean that rely on exporting commodities. Tourism has been greatly affected, further impacting the economies of the Caribbean countries. The sharp rise in unemployment across the region has already pushed families into poverty and more will follow. It is forecasted that 29 million more people will find themselves below the poverty line, the majority of which will be women. Heads of state and ministers of health and finance all face the same dilemma, how to keep their people safe while also protecting the livelihoods of families and communities. It is a difficult balance to strike but I, I dare say not an impossible one. Director of the Pan-American Health Organization, Dr. Carissa Etienne. And St. Lucia continues to benefit from the collaborative approach with the Pan-American Health Organization. Details from Anisia Antoine. The Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, has donated personal protective equipment, PPEs, as part of their continuous support to St. Lucia's Ministry of Health and Wellness in responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. Country Program Specialist at the Pan American Health Organization, Reynold Ewett, presented the donations. We are confident that these PPEs will reach the healthcare workers to protect them from infection of this disease. It is just a part of the contribution that PAHO has made to the government of St. Lucia. In addition to these PPEs, we have conducted training for lab personnel, and we have conducted tr training also in IPC, and we are here to continue this support with the Ministry of Health as long as they respond to this disease. 
So on behalf of PAHO, we take pleasure in handing these personal protective equipment over to the Ministry of Health. Deputy Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Jenny Daniel, expressed gratitude to the Pan American Health Organization for their continuous support towards the battle against COVID-19. We wish to assure you that from our point, we will ensure that those PEEs goes to the persons, the first responders who need them so dearly in their response to the attack from COVID-19. We assure you that they will be used as much as possible to ensure that our citizens are protected and our first responders can perform their duties efficiently and responsibly. Once again, from the Ministry of Health and Government of St. Lucia, we wish to thank you for your partnership during this um, period as we respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. The handing over ceremony of the PPEs took place on Monday, May 11th, 2020 at the Ministry of Health and Wellness. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. St. Lucia has been lauded for its ability to transition into e-learning during this COVID-19 period. Health to San King English Francis of CARICOM News Time. CARICOM Secretariat's education expert, Dr. Laurette Bristol, has lauded St. Lucia's vanguard into digital schooling for primary and secondary students amid the coronavirus quarantine. Speaking to CARICOM News Time, the program manager for human resource development within the CARICOM Secretariat says St. Lucia's launch of formal multimedia schooling demonstrates what the region can achieve in periods of crisis. I want to take the opportunity to congratulate St. Lucia uh, and its, its announcement in the media uh, gave me a great deal of hope because it's suggesting to us that not just St. Lucia, because I know that our other member states are also already engaged in similar types of activity. So it's not just about celebrating St. Lucia's response, but I think it's about celebrating in the main the region's response in terms of the educational sector. Still with education, the Council for Human and Social Development has achieved a regional consensus on the sitting of key examinations. Justin Dunkley Malcolm of CARICOM News Time reports. CSEC, CAPE and CCSLC students will be sitting their examinations in July this year. That was the decision coming out of the first emergency virtual meeting of the Council for Human and Social Development COSOD Education on Friday. Registrar of the Caribbean Examinations Council, CXC, Dr. Wayne Wesley, made a presentation where he explained the administration of the modified exam process for the award of valid grades. He indicated that preserving the integrity of the examinations involved the administration of Paper 1, school-based assessment, and where applicable additional assessment components, along with appropriate modeling accounting for historical data and teacher-predicted information as important calibration quality check. He said while the proposed revised administration schedule for examinations is July 2020, there was need for a regional consensus considering the impact of COVID-19 and the respective national protocols. The COSOD also agreed to have examinations administered via an e-testing modality in countries that are equipped with the requisite infrastructure. However, where there were infrastructure challenges, candidates would be allowed to sit paper-based examinations. The Council also accepted a proposal from the CXC in collaboration with the UWI to accept CAPE Unit 1 plus previous results to serve as matriculation to the UWI for the next academic year. After tedious negotiations and consultations and on evaluating education and health officials' ability to create a safe environment for students to prepare for and sit the regional examinations. The meeting arrived at a consensus for the exams to be held in July 2020. Informed by CARFA's recommendations and strategies for the safe, phased opening of schools, ministries of education guided by national health officials will adapt respective national conditions to ensure students, teachers, and staff can safely prepare for the July sitting. And this is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle of Weol.
COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment of vaccine against COVID-19 and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Ensure that farm clothing and gear is clean. Wash hands thoroughly before harvesting crops. Use face masks and head ties whilst harvesting, cleaning and packaging crops. Use all safety precautions when transporting crops to the markets and depots, such as handling crates and crops with only clean hands and covering sneezes and coughs with a tissue or the inner arm to ensure body fluids or droplets don't get on produce and washing hands or using hand sanitizer after using the tissue. More than ever before, your important role as gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow all St. Lucians access to freshly grown fruits, vegetables, and other local crops. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Novel Aquiol. Monsieur Tangenel, Monsieur Madame, Department Kini West Consabilité pour Information and Gouvernement Cette Lucie GIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, qu'a posé au Nouvel Aquiol. Posé au Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement annoncé date pour PIA commencer opération normalement. Du voyons consultation à établissement finance vendredi premier ministre honorable Alain Chasné et puis ministre des affaires touristiques honorable Dominique Fédé de conduire cette session là et puis secrétaire permanent du ministère des touristiques Donaline Fédé madame Sharon Gardner Hippolyte qui est directrice pour département qui responsable pour production à bureau premier ministre là et madame Nancy Charles qui est directrice pour initiative spéciale ou apporter à qui est-ce que ça pour information en coyol concernant le pays en bas situation COVID-19, Carlton Cox Cyril, qui a expliqué ça qui passe. Et plan, c'est mon zazé, yo qui responsable pour bay jid, et pour bay peu ministre le pays à direction, le vini pour manier sa kaye fait. Pour nous tenir tout ce mon zazé à parler, et nous vini à bout de pli à jordi, et nous kade ou demen si je vle, ou kaye tenir pli, nous kaye en détail, nous kaye fou sa ki manier bagay ka ale, et manier pays à qui vie ouvert encore c'est un plan qui a eu les vignes pour sécurité nation les vignes pour manier sa qui plan nous tenions bagaille rond tout ce monde ça bagaille pas qui con la coutume il pas qui normal tout le monde et bien tout ça qui a eu fait qui a eu pour fait et puis condition produit cette ci à demande qui très haut à sur la place internationale c'est chef officier exécutif export saint louche qui fait déclaration ça là Export Saint Lucia, c'est une agence qui est responsable pour faciliter l'exportation de produits Saint Lucia à l'autre pays, en région et aussi pays international. Nous avons une discussion face à la public à ce NTN. Mlle Sonita Daniel, qui est chef officier exécutif, a déclaré que le pays comme l'Amérique a demandé pour produire Saint Lucia souvent, en particulier en Brapé. Si vous avez demandé pour Brapé, vous avez demandé pour l'Amérique. Vous really aimez vraiment boire pain cette ici. C'est le cas de vous ouvrir un container de boire pain cette ici. Et ça a fait bien. Vous um, really aimez toutes ces lots de bailles là nous ni. Donc à faire six mois actuellement. Tout le monde aime six mois cette ici. So pour nous, si nous pour deux, ça mon gars really m'a dit ou about là ou quitter cette ici et aller de où c'est about agricole. Mamzel Daniel explique aussi export de l'ouche qui a assisté à plusieurs lots façon. Ce n'est pas seulement en ligne agricole, il y a vrai que l'année plusieurs petits communes côté ont assisté à ce qui est business. Les communes qui ont choisi, ils ont craft, 
yoni um say artist la ki ka fè se painting paintings la mm. um yoni a chai service um nou ka pale about village ko denri ki ni denri segment so mm. export set lo chak ka travay et pi se denri segment musician la um pou ede yo hen contract de wo set li si okay. so nou te ka ede yo fè music akwè di music se a business Ça c'est un business où ça fait chai l'argent d'ay. Et ça exporte cette richesse à faire. C'est mener un monde qui a chai non l'argent bot. Ça market la brisée en Miami et Canada. Pour y osav comment y a pour faire business music aussi. Um, so nous aider avec ça et mon ça nous demander yo pour acheter un contract by ces musiciens ça et yo faire ça et nous tenir musiciens dans les segments qui qui um, performé uh, Miami Carnaval. Magui malade corona affecté passai avion globalement programme travail agricole trouvé affecté sérieusement en bas situation ça là en recognition implication économique à ce programme ça là et risque de voyage commission pour cet pays caribé là c'est OECS tu travail très près et puis service de management ressources agricoles les étrangers Service de voyage avion can edge gouvernement Canada et avion Swing Airlines pour te faciliter passer yon 180 travailleurs pour cette pays au Canada mardi le 12 à mois de mai 2020 mais avant ce travail là te voyager toutes ces règles là qui ka gouverner maladie corona te établi ces règles là te fait un pays au même par ministère des affaires travail et assistance au ministre de santé et police et pays Canada même ça c'est pays Canada même et ces services liaison pour ce pays caribé là en collaboration et puis les autorités pays Canada en parmi ces règles là qui étaient en place avant ce travail là qui étaient pays où tu allé Canada tu es né pour trouver tester ou ça présente ces résultats là là en Canada à Canada même il y a aussi des divers équipements comme masques gants et sanitizer il y a aussi qu'il quarantine pour 14 jours là en tué en pays Canada et qu'il a trouvé tout ça là il pas dans en quarantine aussi il y a assurance en total pour couvrir toutes nécessités à parmi le cas Covid-19 c'est place côté il y a pour logement qu'il a trouvé bien sanitaire chaque travailleur qu'il a avec ce travail qui est représentatif, un représentatif, un représentatif, il y a aussi qui est dans un groupe WhatsApp. Directeur général pour l'organisation de la PEOCS, Dr. Didikas Jules, félicite tout agence qui a voyagé, qui a fait ces voyages là possible, particulièrement dans un temps qu'on a présent, les situations de travail très critiques. Il aussi remercie tous ces pays et les gouvernements qui ont participé à faire ça là. Et c'est comme ça nous avons trouvé nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour une invitation pour vous. Et puis encore, je vous remercie pour vous nouvelle en créole. Je vous souhaite tout le monde un bon finissement de semaine. Et à ça, c'est le moment de vous présenter pour vous. Je vous remercie. Merci à Phil Primus. Et ça nous amène à la fin de NTA Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.